Welcome back to the Cheeky Crypto Podcast with your hosts, Chris and JB. Many thanks for listening in, liking and subscribing. If you haven't done so already, do us a favor and mash that like button and subscribe button, turning on all notifications. We really do appreciate it. If you haven't joined the Discord or Patreon, link is in the description down below. A fantastic community talking about crypto 24-7. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. And most importantly, it's absolutely absolutely free to join now let's get into some crypto talk jb how's things good afternoon good morning everybody i hope you're all well it's been a nice good weekend here i celebrated my birthday a few drinks had a nice dinner and it's good to be back on the podcast how are you chris yeah i'm good uh trying to to mirror the the famous intro that mike does uh, and failing miserably (laughs) several times maybe there'd be some outtakes at the end who knows um but yeah look obviously we caught your attention with the ten thousand dollar btc thumbnail and this isn't really clickbait this is kind of where we see ourselves going with everything that's happening you know regarding ftx and sort of the macro viewpoint you know with everything across all the different financial uh instruments at the moment so look i think we're going to uh, touch base on a lot of the FTX uh, contagion sort of looking at Gen- Genesis Genesis can't get my words out Gemini uh, and and many others right you know grayscale and and so forth touch on a little bit of formula 1 i believe as well jb yes definitely one of the one of the issues that are going on just now due to FTX is going to affect formula 1 yeah i i think that it's actually deeper than many people really understand isn't it because uh i read somewhere earlier today that you know formula one will be all right you know uh not really too much contagion there but like now i'm hearing different yeah definitely obviously ftx does play a big part a lot of crypto companies do play a big part in in the formula one with team sponsorship um track sponsorships driver development that, that does go very deep obviously um formula one were taken over a few years back and they have now looked into different avenues for funding for teams for tracks um, even travel travel is obviously a big expense so yeah that's something else that nobody's really talking about right now right so i'm i'm thinking should i share my screen and then we we sort of you know dig into some of the articles yeah if you want to share ftx so i think it's best to start off here we're looking at an article here about ftx and sbf authorities in turkey have seized Sam Bankman Freed's assets. Obviously, this is quite big. What are your thoughts, Chris? Yeah, look, um, I, I guess you know, you could say, meanwhile, whilst uh, Dog Boy is over in um, <laughs> where is it, Bahamas, um, you know, chasing him down like Dog the Bounty Hunter. So we'll call him Dog Boy. Um, yeah, look, um, Turkey obviously sees in uh, SBFs assets you know uh, i guess affiliated with the exchange and everything is, is probably something i was expecting to see you know in pockets all around the world but we really haven't have we and uh you know hats off to, to turkey for for making a move here and uh yeah look there, there's a few i think they're being articulated as puff pieces right where actually they're being made out to to just be you know individuals that made a mistake and you know it's not really their fault and this this sort of stuff happens in business uh, when it's really just fraudulent activity right and uh, i think turkey have made one of the first moves when it comes to to this uh, ftx saga i don't know would that align with with your thoughts yeah, it definitely does. I, I do think it is the right thing to do, and we may see more of this. I mean, the the basis of Turkey investigating this is obviously the likes of um, money laundering. This is obviously huge. There has been, we've seen obviously a lot of um, SBF and FTX have drawn money yeah. um, before the collapse. So obviously Turkey are stepping up. They're taking note of what is going on. So I think it's only good things that this is happening. Yeah, I, I do as well. I think that, you know, you need to act fast with this sort of stuff otherwise you know assets start disappearing right like uh they've obviously got an awful lot of uh fraud that's happened so far so yeah look i i think this is good to see uh i'm just uh appalled that we haven't seen more of it to be honest um so let's move on we've got um crypto brokerage genesis is said to warn of bankruptcy without funding and i, I touched on this previously around funding being required i think they were looking to to get um i think it was a billion 
dollars funding and yeah, i think plus... they only got to about 500 million so they're, they're only about halfway through at least the last time i checked and um you know genesis um you know spent the weekend seeking uh to line up line up more financing and uh, look it's uh, yet to to be seen whether they can actually achieve the requirements right and i, I think they are going to really really struggle obviously genesis lending unit suspends uh withdrawals after the fdx collapse so what what are your thoughts on on where we are with with genesis because they're they're a really big player and uh I know that the thumbnail was all titled up ten thousand dollar Bitcoin. And that is purely because that's where we believe we're we're likely to to be heading, right? Maybe even lower, um, because these are big, big companies. They're big players, and uh, there are going to be companies that are already bankrupt. We just don't know about it. They're not making it public just yet. So, yeah, I think there's a, a lot more to come. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm totally aligned with that. I mean, Genesis are huge. They they are struggling to raise the funds they have already warned investors that they may file for bankruptcy that's blatantly obvious now for them to go under the ten thousand bitcoin becomes easier to reach i think mm. i do also do think it will go a lot lower it's a lot of money that they don't have it's a lot of money that people want back so anything that's a catalyst for it to go lower and one aspect that i'm happy with because it means us the community everybody here watching can scoop up more um, of their projects at a cheaper price. However, there will obviously be a lot of people affected with this as well. So it does play on both um, sides of the scale here. But yeah, it's, it is quite concerning to see somebody like Genesis struggling so badly. Yeah, and they're, they're big with institutions, right? So the contagion from this is you know likely to be huge. Um, you know, from a from a venture capital kind of point of view, and you know this is going to have even more impacts on you know whether other exchanges are able to to still you know be liquid right and uh you know run uh efficiently and effectively so look if there's pockets of people i say if like i know there's people that have still got crypto on exchanges started to feel comfortable again because you know you, you're not seeing as many projects or companies starting to file bankruptcy Believe me, this is not over just yet. Um, I would not be comfortable myself on any exchange, regardless of who they are uh, and how big they are. There's lots of talk that, you know, some of these companies are too big to fail. They're really not. Like, let's just be really, really clear. They're not. So, you know, the corruption is is deep at the minute as well. So we should be, you know, fully aware of all that. Yeah, just to retouch on that, no company is safe here. Let's really mm -hmm. settle that uh, argument no company is safe well obviously i personally have a lot of faith in binance they are the biggest there it's not to say they're 100 safe so 100 make sure you, you you don't have your money on the um, exchanges it's the biggest piece of advice i think we can give you right now ledgers metamask trust wallets we talk about it every time just please don't have your money on exchanges your crypto on exchanges keep it keep it safe guys yeah for sure and we've got a link to ledger we've got an affiliate link in the description of the video if you wish to to get a, a nano ledger uh, there are some deals i think we've got a 10 percent discount uh code in the discord as well if that is of interest so definitely worth exploring those you know if you can't afford to get a ledger use metamask or trust wallet for example and i, I know there's going to be uh, there's been some pockets of bad news for metamask as well but you know you find a reputable you know metamask like, like i guess warm wallet or cold storage wallet um that works for you yeah and just remember guys christmas is around the corner might be a, a nice little cheeky christmas present for yourself or for somebody that you know that uh, has some crypto a ledger would be very nice definitely completely aligned with that right let's move on we've got um gemini and uh warns customers of likely withdrawal delays due to genesis lending pause so look the first thing that i'm going to say here is that they're, they're entwined they're interlinked and you know this is this is one company that's already having to to tell you that there's going to be delays why because they're probably not as liquid as they need to be right now so look it's first come first serve to get off of these exchanges so you know just be aware of that what are your thoughts yeah so 
the one thing I want to pick up here is a piece of the article, and it's just this little script in the middle, and it's about Gemini, how they're partnering with accredited third-party borrowers, including Genesis. Now, they're obviously vetting through Genesis as a risk management. They are concerned. Both parties here, they're not innocent. There's a lot going on. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I do think I do think there's a lot we don't know yet. Um, there's still a lot to be revealed from everything that's happened with Geminis, Genesis and Gemini. Um, yeah, I do think this will have a massive effect on the market. Yeah, I, I do as well. I think this could be that that tipping point for some of the exchanges and other platforms to be filing for for bankruptcy i think we're gonna find out so much more and and don't forget you know uh, i've been sort of raising uh, i guess alarm bells for solana right so i think i initially called um for people to potentially look at a short on um solana back on the 7th or 8th of november this is before everything uh happened with with ftx and you know alameda research has still got over 13 percent of the total solana supply um so just be fully aware of that right we're down at i think full just over 14 dollars i still expect further downside for solana as as well as some other assets as well so you know it's just my opinion obviously i'm not a financial advisor treat this as educational purposes only go away do your own research and see you know whether you know i'm talking out of my ass or not yeah and also when we're talking about this when we're looking at the likes of solana look into these projects understand why they have these issues but also the likes of solana then have projects that align with them so there may obviously be other ones that you need to start looking at jump into the patreon uh, into the discord come and chat with us we're in there um talking with members we all bounce ideas off each other um we also bring up concerns with other places and we all start looking in so you know we're all working together here to keep each other safe so yeah definitely do some research on all these projects Yeah, I mean, the Discord and the Patreon is kind of the hub of everything that we do. We don't just jump on here. Like we have our set times for videos. Um, You know, occasionally if something really, really important comes up, we, we may jump on. But look, you know, the Discord is kind of where we let everybody know about everything that's going on. Obviously, we let, you know, all of our community know about FTX, BlockFi. I think we were probably the first people to to um highlight blockfi we were certainly one of the first people to to flag ftx i know bitboy talks about you know he's been raising this and talking about this for weeks but he really hadn't what he'd been talking about was his uh, little policy thing that he had had you know that uh, sam you know tried to to steal um and, and and sort of get a march on bitboy what he wasn't actually doing was flagging that you know ftx was this big uh fraudulent um scheme uh, i think we actually highlighted it before zz did uh and you know in essence we actually raised the alarms before bitboy did um officially so um you know we've been way ahead of the curve when it comes to this stuff i, I honestly don't think uh, anybody flagged um block five before we did so you know we've managed to keep people you know pretty safe in in this uh turbulent market and this would be something that we look to to continue to do in the Discord. So definitely worth jumping in uh, and same with Patreon if that is your cup of tea. But let's move on. And we've got um, Grayscale owner DCB reveals it's $2 billion in debt. And again, this is what we're talking about. All this contagion that's that's happening, right? It isn't just, you know, one or two reasonably big size companies it's monstrous size companies and grayscale owner obviously revealing that it is two billion dollars which is 1.65 billion pounds in debt uh, causing the value of bitcoin to look increasingly precarious due to the company's uh, digital asset holdings and ownership of troubled crypto lender Genesis. And this is the thing, right? It gets really, really deep. So, you know, I know that people are going to be, you know, probably probably not watching this full video uh, shouting that, you know, the thumbnail is uh, clickbait, but it really, really isn't, right? There's an awful lot of, you know, these different assets that are going to be used as collateral for failed businesses. I just want to be really clear about that. 
Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. I mean, you just have to look at there. They own 643,572 Bitcoin. Now, yeah. if you were to immediately pull all that off the exchange, that's 3% of available Bitcoin on the market just now. That is going to create this massive drop in price. Maybe a surge in the exchanges for folk wanting to remove themselves from the, the, the big issue that is obviously likely to happen if these companies do go under. So yeah, definitely 643,000 Bitcoin is a hell of a lot of Bitcoin. It really what would is. you do if you owned 643,000 Bitcoin? I'd go to the Bahamas and be with uh, Dog Boy, <laughs> where I'd be. Um, no, jokes aside, look, um, these companies might not fail, but if I was a betting man, <laughs> I'd yeah. probably say that some of them are. Um, but let's let's um, let's move on to the next article. American regulators to investigate Genesis and crypto firms. Basically, these are a few states in the U.S. that are investigating alleged security violations in connection uh with retail investors and again i think this is this is very telling right um there, there's going to be a real push to to make crypto uh look like it's the the villain at all of this when really it isn't a blockchain technology or a crypto issue this is a people issue i think charles hoskinson when we interviewed him uh probably aired this um in, in the best way you know, blockchain technology and crypto isn't the issue. It, it's a people issue and blockchain technology moves you away from the people issues if you do it properly. And uh, maybe we're not quite there yet. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I, I really resonated when Charles did mention that. Like, it really starts to sit in with you that the issue is not what's going on. It's the people. The people are creating this issue. They're they're the, they're the ones that are doing the irresponsible actions that are then affecting us, the 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 normal people. I like to say normal people because we are. The the actions that these whales, if you like to call them whales, what they are doing is really affecting what happens to us. The likes of Luna is a good example. Now, we all know what happened with Luna with Do Kwon. That really affected a lot of people, and this it's not the same thing, but it's along it's along the same lines. You know, it's going to affect a lot of people with the irresponsible actions that they are taking. That's kind of what I want to drive here, and what you are saying is totally correct. It's the people that are the issue here. Yeah, and look, I think we're we're in a slightly different position because we've been ahead of a lot of this stuff before everything started to collapse, right? So the people that we're surrounded by are are the winners in all of this right they're the ones that were short in they are the ones that got out of ftx and sold all their ftt you know uh they they shorted or come out of solana uh and you know new people that are coming in are, are doing the same right so you know we're in a a different position we're probably not hearing the heartache the pain um you know outside of the people we're surrounding ourselves with so yeah i, I i'm not um you know, I'm not surprised that, you know, there will be lots of people massively impacted and losing out. And uh, I mentioned in one of the previous videos that I expect there to, to be, you know, bear market rallies for some of these coins, right? There's going to be, you know, influencers, and uh, I already know this is happening, shilling their bags, shilling the likes of Solana, telling you that it's actually going to do all right and it's going to bounce back. And all they're doing is uh, making pockets of liquidity so they can exit and sell to you uh, for believing their their poorly articulated lies. Um, yep, that, you know, yeah, that these these projects are going to do really well. So, you know, I think there's going to be some scam pump uh, uh, pumps. I think that... You know, we've still got lower lows to to, to go. And, uh, you know, I think people are actually starting to recognize that actually we, we're, we're pretty good in a bear market. We kind of know <laughs> kind of know how to operate in a bear market. Uh, yeah. and, and a few people have been found out. And uh, I, I do see a, a few pockets of arguments between influencers on, on Twitter, for example, you know, of people that, you know, looks really, really good in, in a bull market where, you know, everybody that's a trader is making money. But it's slightly different in this scenario. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I, w I want to touch on the likes of the, the these guys on YouTube. There's a couple of real interesting ones I do still follow. I do like them. One of them is a really big YouTube personality. Mm. And forever, for as long as I've watched his videos, everything's been crypto related or the best credit cards and things like that, things like that in America. But what I've now noticed that he's no longer making many Bitcoin videos, 
cryptocurrency yeah. videos in general, they're moving back to the financial side of it to, to secure yourself. Now, that's obviously what Chris and Nick are, are telling everybody here, to look after your assets with everything that's going on right now. So we're seeing that on the, the, the global scale as well, that everybody is in the fear stage, that they are quite concerned about where their money is and what is happening with their money. So, yeah, I, I do feel paying attention to the Discord right now is going to prove very prevalent. The the calls that Chris is making in the urgent news um, articles that are coming out. Yeah, I'll definitely be keeping your eyes on because I don't think we're we're near the end of the bad news. Yeah, we're 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 not at that maximum pain yet. Like we've like Nick and myself have experienced it right a few times yeah. now, and uh, you know we we were telling people that you know that were telling us that we were wrong, which you know has happened for months and up upon months, right? Um, when we were saying, um you know, the bottom wasn't in June and the lower lows are going to come. You know, uh, I was telling these individuals they were going to be humbled by what was about to happen. Um, and, and I don't think we're there yet. I don't think they're fully humbled. Um, so, you yeah, know, let's, uh, let's keep an eye on everything that's happening. And I, I imagine there's going to be more urgent alerts over the, the coming days and, and weeks. I really do. Yep, definitely. I don't think we've seen the end of the pain. Exchanges, some projects might feel the pain. I do think there's more exchanges to feel pain, just to touch back on that. I know we, at some point we will be doing a podcast around exchanges. I think that will be very good to to talk about and for everybody to hear about. Um, but I do feel there's a couple of exchanges that are still a bit risky and a lot of projects that won't survive when we... Sorry, I better not say when, if we do see 10K Bitcoin, but I'm very confident we will see Bitcoin below $10,000. Yeah, I'm going to go when we see $10,000 Bitcoin, because I think it's going to go lower. I really do. Um, not that I want it to. Like, you know, like I'll, I'll scoop some up, but like I don't want it to go down. Like I don't want people to to lose money. I, I would like us to, to bottom out and then, you know, see that reversal. But you know, we need to be realists here. We need to talk about, you know, what we're likely to see in the the space and uh, hopefully people will will resonate with it. And if they don't, they will be humbled. And, uh, you know, I really do believe that, passionately believe that, you know, if you're not on the right side of this and uh, you make the wrong decision, you know, you, you're going to regret it. Um, you know, obviously not not financial advice. It's just my opinion. Go away and, and, and look into some of this stuff. Look, uh, you know, who's exposed to genesis uh, genesis and some of these other crypto firms go have a look in the discord at the exchanges that i've highlighted that i have concerns uh, about the lending um, platforms that i've highlighted that i have concerns over uh, you know i detailed as to, to why i have these concerns you can go look at in it uh, look into it and, and see whether you resonate with with what i'm saying uh, or whether you, you completely disagree and there are people that disagree and that's absolutely fine absolutely fine we just see who's right and, and who's wrong and i hope i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong you know because if i'm wrong you know less people are, are actually going to be hurt by it right so this isn't a case of wanting to be right it's a case of i want to keep as many people uh as safe as possible and on the right side of things so should we move on and have a look at um next week right this is this is your 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 remit this is uh yes your your little uh sheet that we share in the discord and what we'll do on the the podcast is you know at the beginning of the week sort of talk through what 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 events are, are happening and uh what we should be keeping an eye on yeah this is my cup of tea i like to know what's going on around the world everything you see here on the screen is not everything that's going on, but these are the ones I'm picking out that may not move the crypto scale, but may move things that are happening around the world. Now, obviously, on Monday the 28th, we do see there is a couple of speeches. These may not do much. They may, but it's good to know these are happening and why they're happening. There was a lot of ECB meetings, the European um, Central Bank meetings last week. There is also meetings again this week. They happen all the time. These, this isn't anything abnormal, but it's good to know what is going on, why they're having these meetings. Moving on to Tuesday, 29th, we can obviously see Switzerland's um, GDP growth rate for year on year. Switzerland, as we know, massive financial player. Moving on to the United Kingdom, have mortgage approvals and lending for October. Now, that is good to know because we know it's hard at this time uh, of year to get a good mortgage at, on a good rate. And it would be good to find out who and how many people are actually getting approved for mortgages right now. 
Yeah, I think that this is something that people should really keep an eye on, not just because it's the UK, but I really do think that we will get to a point where we're going to have real issues with property. Um, so, yeah, look, uh, credit card debt is on the rise. People's savings are reducing as they're you know, eating into it to, to keep themselves afloat. And uh, this can only go on for you know a certain length of time before the money runs out. And when that money runs out, houses will be repossessed. So look, you know, uh, I've been through recessions before. Uh, I've got the experience of being through it, through it that many influencers don't have. So you know, just be um, conscious that these are things that we want to keep an eye on. Uh, it might not move the market imminently, um, but it gives us a, a tip off as to to how things are going to progress. Yeah, the last recession, I was still a young pup, so I didn't really <laughs> experience the full force of that. Um, one other key thing that I would like to touch on for the 29th is for America. Now, you can see again the house price index uh, for month on month versus September's figures. And then straight after that, we will have consumer confidence um, for November. Two big things that are obviously happening in America there. And then as we move forward, we can also see the GDP growth rate for America followed by Fed Chair Powell's speech. Fed Chair Powell, he's always an interesting guy to listen to. I would advise maybe trying to tune in for that. If you can't tune in for it, maybe read up on what he talks about because he always talks a lot of interesting things. And then obviously Normally. on the first as well, um, it's also the core price index year-on-year -year figures for America. Again, keep an eye on what's happening there. And then lastly, for America on Friday is the non-farming payrolls for November and the unemployment rate. Again, a big thing to keep an eye on. Yeah, so I think there's there's definitely some some uh, events throughout the week that could definitely move the, the crypto market and maybe a few other markets as well, right? So yeah, look, it's going to be another really, really interesting week in my opinion. Uh, I think that, you know, it's great to have like the podcast, um, they'll obviously go out, you know, first thing on Monday morning, UK time uh, to, to sort of start the week, sort of knowing what what's coming up and uh, and everything like that. I think it's uh, it's definitely going to be beneficial to to stay ahead of, you know, the the curve. And I think that's really important uh, for from our side to, to make sure that we illustrate the, the biggest events that are going to be happening uh, for, for this week. Yeah, definitely. As I say, this is my bread and butter. I like to know what's going on around the world. That's what's happening with our money, our lending, our savings. Everything is affected by all these little meetings. Because if you have, let's say, 100 small meetings happening around the world, all these things could be focusing, all these meetings sorry, could be focusing on the same thing, which could turn into a bigger thing. I know there's a lot of things going on there. But yeah, I like to know what's happening around the world, what may affect what is going on and why it's happening. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think we need to just touch on the Formula One stuff, right? Because uh, I think I, I skipped over that and we should probably touch on it because, you know, like you mentioned, uh, a lot of the, the different crypto companies are sort of, you know, sponsored. Uh, sponsoring uh, lots of different sports teams in various different sports, right? And we're probably going to see some of these other exchanges uh, collapse, in my opinion, uh, that are also in these these sectors. So, yeah, let's have a look at what FTX uh, contagions like in Formula One. I'm a big Formula One fan. That's why I'm interested in this first and foremost. But when you look into it and you see it's not just FTX, Crypto.com, um, who else do we have? OKX, they're heavily invested in what is going on with Formula One. A few years back, Formula One was taken over by an American. Um, and then they started looking into avenues of how to expand Formula One as a global platform. One of the ways they've done it was through crypto. So FTX took a big part with Mercedes Formula One team, probably arguably the biggest Formula One team. Now, with them removing their investment, what effect will that then have? on the Formula One team. But then you have the likes of OKX, they sponsor McLaren. But not only do these companies sponsor teams, they, they sponsor the tracks they race on. They also help fund the travel for the teams, the staff. All these things add up to a hell of a lot of money. So for this kind of funding to be pulled, that will obviously have a knock-on effect. With this having a knock-on effect, that obviously creates a chain reaction 
where do they where do they start looking for additional funding? Do they then look at different crypto platforms? Do they then look at projects for funding? I do again. I see this as a chain reaction. Um, everything SPF and FTX related. Yeah, I think we could see far, far more. And I think that's the message that needs to go out is, you know, that that mindset that I, I mentioned before all of this kicked off. I think it was the very day before uh, I encouraged everybody to to watch a video that I was putting together, which I thought was a really important message. You know, preserve your capital, keep your capital safe and, um, you know, make sure that you you understand the risks that you you have and question whether you need to have those risks at all. Um, and, you know, literally the next day FTX uh, started to collapse and everything started to come out. So, look, I think uh, we're still in that that mindset of, you know, preserve capital. I think we're going to be there for a few more weeks yet, maybe a couple of months. And then, uh, you know, maybe that uh, uh, loosen up, you know, making money should be secondary to, to that mindset. In my opinion, you can make money in this market. I've said it time and time again. I'm not suggesting not to try to make money, but look after your capital right there's um there's other influencers that you know have have traded this market impeccably yeah and then lost all their money because they were using ftx for for their trading platform right and that's not that individuals that they're at that indig individuals can't get my words out fault right like he's he's managed the market impeccably he's traded it you know really really well made an awful lot of money talking over a million dollars uh, for FTX to just collapse and for him to to lose all of that money, and he's probably never going to get it back. Um, so look, just be be mindful that you know making money can end in that same way, right? Which is why the mindset should be preserve your capital first. Yep, definitely, guys. We've said it time and time again. I will keep saying it just so it, it gets into into everybody's head. Keep your money off exchanges. Keep your crypto off exchanges, hard, wall hard wallets, cold wallets, whatever you can do to alleviate the risk. If you move into the likes of MetaMask, back it up with Ledger. Very simple. I know it's money to be spent buying a Ledger, but would you rather spend the hundred odd pound buying, sorry, dollars buying a Ledger, or would you rather lose the thousands of pounds that you could potentially lose if an exchange went under? The best thing to do is be proactive in this space. This time, everything that's going on, look after yourself, guys. Yeah, I, I think so. So I hope everybody enjoyed today's uh, podcast. If you did, mash up that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, tap in that bell, select in all the notifications so you never miss a video. And you know what? We'll catch you in the next one. 